Do you believe that all healthy community cats, regardless of temperament, should be eligible to participate in return to field programs? I do. And find out why in today's Saving America's Pets. Hi, I'm Holly Sizemore, Chief Mission Officer for Best Friends Animal Society, and this is Rose, my fabulous co-host. Welcome to Saving America's Pets. Community cats come in all types, and while some may be too scared to interact with their caregivers, others are social and friendly. Here is a story from a cat lover in Texas about losing and finding her beloved cat, Star. The way um, I found out about TNR was, um, like I said, they trapped, I, I thought it was three cats, outdoor cats. When they, they came and they're like, can we release a cat that we had trapped a couple of days ago? I figured, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But I was wondering, I'm like, well, what other cat did they trap? Because I know the cats are linger here in the front. So when the lady came down with that kennel and I saw a white little kitty cat, my God, I fell to my knees and I have a bad knee. Um, I fell to my knees and I started crying because I've had her since I was 23. And um, it's, she's, she's an older cat. Um, you, you, can't, you, you might not tell by looking at her, but she's 15, 17 years old already. And I was just, I was sad. I was heartbroken because I didn't know. I didn't know she had trapped her and I had told her that she was my outdoor back cat. I just, I don't know, I just, I wanted to be angry at her, but I understand it's her property, but thankfully this program was in effect and I got my baby back. I was just thinking of all the stuff we've been through from apartment to apartment to finally having, living here with my boyfriend in his house. I was just, oh my god, like she's this is my baby. She's the one that's been with me for the longest time and luckily TNR brought her back to me. I'm just, just so happy for that program. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry. I'm like what if she never came back to me? Like what was she like what would her outcome be at the shelter or I don't know, just thinking of the what ifs is it's a burden and and it's not good having that what if in the back of your mind. What if, what if I would have brought her back in? What if she got along with the boys inside? What if my neighbor actually liked cats? <clears throat> it's just a whole lot of what ifs and it's, it's not good to think of all that stuff. But luckily she's back home and even though she's a little moody, older cat, um, she's inside. She's happy inside, you know, just getting along with the boys but I'm happy, I'm really am happy. This program is, I love it. I'm just so happy this program's here. The American Pet Products Association's National Pet Owners did a survey of 15,000 consumers in 2020 and found that roughly a third allow their cats some outdoor access. Another 14% said they took care of free roaming cats with 95% of those providing food and water, 43% providing shelter, 20% getting the cat spayed or neutered, and 13% providing additional medical care. Shelter policies that dictate that all friendly community cats be adopted rather than returned can actually have a harmful impact on shelter's life-saving capacity, as well as an adverse effect on the community. As resources are invested in adopting out cats, who were already well cared for and loved by their people. To hear more about the nuances of this somewhat controversial issue, we are excited to have joining us Peter Wolf, Research and Policy Analyst for Best Friends. Welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell me why it's controversial, this practice of some community cat programs returning tame cats back to the location where they were found. Sure. As you know, these community cat programs have been in place for more than 10 years in many communities. And of course, initially, the, the primary driver was the unadoptable cats, right? That's where our focus was on the cats who couldn't be adopted. And so it made more sense to sterilize, vaccinate, and return them. And now I kind of think of this as sort of uh, phase two or, or version 2.0 of, of shelter-based uh, community cat programming or TNR programming. And now the emphasis is, is not just the uh, uh, feral cats as, as they're often called, but on these sociable cats. 
And what makes it controversial, like so much in animal welfare, is it's coming from good intentions. People are concerned about the welfare of these cats. And the thinking, of course, is if they're sociable cats, why can't we find homes for them? Um, so that's kind of the, the, the heart of the controversy. And there's a number of reasons why we would argue it's still better in many cases to sterilize, vaccinate, and return them than to impound them and offer them for adoption. It seems like adoption would be the best option. Sure. And, and I, I want to preface my comments by saying we want to look at every case individually. Uh, the worst thing we can do is a one-size-fits-all uh, sort of program. That was the default for years. And of course, that one-size-fits-all was bring in all the cats, take them from the public, take them from animal uh, protection officers. Cats came in, they got impounded, whether or not there was a positive outcome. We don't want to shift so far in the other direction where that one size fits all looks like return every cat who comes into the shelter. We want to look at them as individuals. It depends on the circumstances of the shelter and in particular, the circumstances of that cat in front of you. The first and foremost being, if this cat is sociable, it's because they have people. Off, we know often these cats have multiple caregivers in the same communities. Um, they may go by many different names, depending on where, which buffet they're taking advantage of in a particular evening or, or morning. Um, many of them have owners. And, and uh, there, there's one particular example. We actually have a video clip of, of, of Myra uh, recounting her story of the only reason she got her beloved pet cat back was because of a community cat program like this. Now, this is uh, Star is a very sociable, beautiful cat we would often think of uh, as an adoption candidate. And yet that cat would have been adopted. Even if that cat got a great loving home, that cat would have been removed from a great loving home to begin with and would have been missed mm -hmm. terribly. And I mean, the other piece that, that we have to think about is when we bring in cats like that, who could be and often should be returned where they were found, they create competition for the cats who don't have another outcome. And owner surrender, we're not returning those because they're owner surrenders. There's no place to return them to. Their only hope for a positive outcome is adoption. How do shelters determine the individual need of that cat? Yeah, the key piece there is, the, uh, and a, a lot of this, frankly, it falls to intake staff because it's, it's gathering that information. And of course, this could be uh, a resident brings the cat in. It could also be, again, animal protection officer bringing in the cat, slightly different routes, but essentially the cat comes into the shelter. And again, you want to know where did the cat come from? I mean, location is absolutely essential. You can't put the cat back where they came from if you don't know where that cat came from. But more context is also better. How long have, has this cat been hanging around? It, it's a very different scenario. For example, if a resident comes in and says, look, I know this cat was owned by my neighbors. They moved away two weeks ago. This cat hasn't left their porch in the last two weeks. That is invaluable information. And right there you think, okay, it's almost an owner surrender in that case. You don't necessarily want to- It was abandoned. Cat the cat was actually abandoned, right? Exactly right, exactly right. And again, that changes everything. In, and it's a very different scenario from say uh, a caretaker coming in and saying, look, I, this is one of, say a dozen cats I've been caring for for the last several years. I'm, I'm in over my head. I can't afford the food, the medical, whatever. And in that case, the shelter, again, having that information, they can provide those resources and say, well, look, if you're willing to continue caring for them, we can make sure they're all spayed and neutered and, and, and sterilized and make this a manageable situation. What about the situation where the only information you have about the cat is that it's healthy and sociable and it's been hanging around for a while? That's not the exception, that's probably the norm. And in a case like that, the general recommendation would be sterilize, vaccinate, put them back. Good reason to think that cat's health is gonna actually get better after they're sterilized and vaccinated. And ideally, um, you do a little door knocking, find out who else, who's been caring. If the cat's been hanging around for months, there's resources, clearly. Um, so who are those resources? And again, tap into them and in almost every case, doing so you find more on, sterilized, unvaccinated cats. And, and that's how you can manage these situations so that you prevent the next visit with the same kind of scenario, right? I mean, you take a preemptive approach. 
what tips do you have for an organization or a shelter that might want to try a program like this? I would say things to do first and foremost, make it a pilot, try it out, see how it's going, check in regularly. You don't have to uh, jump in with both feet right out of the gate, check with colleagues who are skeptical. In terms of things not to do, don't make it a one size fits all. And, and we do see this happen in some places where suddenly every cat coming in as a stray gets returned. As we talked about, they all need to be looked at as individuals. Boy, it sounds like a different kind of TNR than we practiced 20 years ago, that's for sure. And it's a different kind than I, like I came into this maybe 10 or 11 years ago. In, in a lot of ways, it's actually really good news. Uh, it's gonna mean a whole lot more cats are saved. It also means a whole lot of, whole lot of cats are kept with the people who care about them already. Indeed. Great. Thank you so much, Peter. Well, thanks again for having me. The places that have the greatest impact on community cat populations typically couple robust return to field programming with collaborative relationships with local community-based trap, neuter, return, or TNR organizations. This holistic approach has been key to successfully reducing intake numbers and deaths in shelters in communities large and small around the country. Because together, we can save them all.